what's going on everyone? Jax here at Caffeine and Octane and it's, uh, it's freezing literally this morning but you can tell the crowd is big. So we're gonna take a walk around, check out the show and uh, see what's here on this March edition of Caffeine and Octane. It's a 2006 Scion XB. If you're in Japan, they call them a Toyota BB. I've been working on it for about five years. I bought it about five years ago. Just kind of did the wrap. Uh, between my wife and I, we did quite a bit of the work on it. Uh, pretty much almost everything on there, her and I had some part of putting on, installing, or building. I kind of wanted to do the Japanese theme with it. I want full JDM, Itasha style. Just kind of something I wanted to do, something unique. It's one of those cars, I, what, third motor on it? So, no, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. One of the cool things about coming out to Caffeine and Octane is they make a TV show called Caffeine and Octane, and they are filming today. So I'm going to go creep on them a little bit and uh, and see kind of a behind the scenes process of how they film the TV show here at the car show. It's pretty cool and it's uh, definitely unique. So they're filming the Caffeine and Octane TV show back over there behind me, uh, which is always kind of fun to see because they just, they're really chill about it. They just sort of mingle with the crowd and hang out and uh, you might find yourself in the background of the TV show and you didn't even realize it. Also, let me apologize for my appearance. I'm not trying to be incognito, but it's cold and I'm a wimp. So I'm gonna have my hood up like this for a little while so my ears don't fall off. Also, you might notice that the crowd is big despite the weather. That's because uh, even if the coronavirus was ravaging Atlanta, people would still turn out for caffeine and octane. They'd be like, it's fine, my nose is just runny, but I gotta go to the car show. I just have a creative mind. I don't know. I just get going. I started out with this right here. This is where I started. This one piece. <laughs> and then I realized uh, there was a whole lot of aftermarket stuff. And I just kept going. I enjoy making things personal. I can't, I don't like having something somebody else has. So the more I can make it different, the more I did. And I think this last piece kind of did it. You never, that's why I have got one on one on it. That's it. You won't see another one like it. Uh, he's been a car guy since, you know, a wee lad. Um, he's had a passion for small cars. I've, he's been a family friend of mine since I was like 15. So it was one of those things where uh, a bunch of us went to Japan. He'd already bought some cars from some guys over there and uh, he wanted to go meet them, but he tagged along with us, make the trip cheaper, yada, yada, yada. Um, went to Japan, we got to see the whole operation and, you know, go to auction, test some cars out. And then we just started bringing them over. Um, when we came back, we like made plans on the airplane, uh, established the LLC, and kind of just started coming here. We had, you know, barely three cars back in the day, and now, you know, we've got the tent. All the most of the right-hand drives here are like previous customer customers of ours, and uh, it's been kind of like a, you know, from ground zero building up. Now we've kind of established a good name for ourselves, and uh, it's been it's been pretty good, man. We just sold that Skyline yesterday. We sold this beat the week before. Uh, the beat was a custom order, so we can do both uh, sell out of our inventory or sell uh, or do custom orders. You know, if you want something particular or specific, we can go find that for you. It's definitely grown a lot more than what it was a couple of years ago. You know, uh, a lot of people haven't didn't even know that these cars existed like this, and didn't really know or understand why we couldn't have them here. 
Uh, a lot of people are unaware of the 25 year import law, but now that people are starting to figure it out, um, you know, these are starting to blow up like really big. A lot of the JDM spec cars here are a lot faster than the cars we got here. Like the MR2s here, we stopped the revision two. I think they were at like 180 horsepower with the turbos. The revision threes that were released in Japan play 285 stock. Uh, same car, but they just have to go through all the EPA and all the regulations here in the U.S. So yeah, it's definitely been picking up a lot. One of the coolest things about Caffeine and Octane has got to be the diversity of cars, of people, of dogs. There's a lot of dogs here. If you're a dog person, you would love Caffeine and Octane. We were going to start Caffeine and Canines, but it, it didn't take off. It, it Like five people showed up and they were all a little weird. But Caffeine and Octane, the diversity of people is sort of its hallmark. You see people with classic cars, trucks, motorcycles, JDM, uh, you got the Mopar boys, you got the LS boys, you got the Ford Mustang boys, and they all don't like each other. It gets awkward sometimes. I'm just kidding. Everybody gets along great because car people are awesome people. And that's why this show is so successful. Hey, anybody can win this car. Anybody can win this car. We're going to be raffling it off at the Atlanta Low Ride Super Show. Cafe and Octane, y'all already know, we're a big supporter of you guys. We love you guys, but we brought this thing so we can show it off and uh, keep this Low Rider game alive, you know what I'm saying? Anybody can win it. Come through. I actually had a 76 Oldsmobile Cutlass was my first car I learned to drive on. Dad was right. I wish I still had it. If you've been coming to Cafe and Octane for a while, you know that the car club area, the sort of club corral, gen pop we'll call it, is where the action really is. This is where you see the most uh, sort of diverse selection of cars, of people, everything from brand new models to classics to motorcycles to things that people are in the process of restoring and might be actually falling apart as they sit there, you'll find a little bit of everything. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm at Caffeine and Octane, I like to play a little game called, which car would I like to kill me? You know, cause you're just walking around the aisles and you never know when you might get squashed, but you know what, it'd be worth it. For me right now, probably a Lamborghini. I'd be kind of disappointed if I got taken out by like a Subaru or something like that. But it's best not to push my luck. Actually, if I'm being honest, we all know it'd be a Mustang because I'm an LS fanboy, So it'd probably be some vengeful person who saw me on YouTube. That's like, oh, there's that Jax guy. He really is six and a half feet tall, easy target. Well, we'll call it a wrap on the March edition of Caffeine and Octane, at least in this location, because I'm gonna head down to the Atlanta Auto Show now and check out Caffeine and Octane's display down there. So stay tuned for that content. Thanks for joining us in these uh, little social media experiments. I'm Jax, you can check out my YouTube channel below. It's probably somewhere beneath my finger, unless I did a terrible job editing. And uh, stick with us uh, for more content coming from Caffeine and Octane, social media, Instagram, uh, probably Snapchat and TikTok. I don't know. I'll talk to them because uh, my stuff, again, right there. But I'll catch you next time.